welcome to Next Game's Odyssey series. In this video, we'll cover the Shield Jail Atonement 3NM Zivioso. In this video, we'll cover the Zivioso battle strategy, and then I'll show a battle example of the fight against Zivioso, where I successfully take him on and defeat him. We'll do all of this on the ninja job with no sub job. Now it took me a total of four tries to nail down a proper strategy for taking on this NM. The first two runs were already posted in my Introduction to Sheol Jail Atonement 3 NMs video. In those runs, I ended up having accuracy issues with my gear set, it wasn't changing my gear sets properly, and I didn't feel like I had enough healing to compete with all the damage that can occur during this run. So in my third run, I changed my strategy to address these things, and ended up getting Zivioso down to 18% before pulling hate and getting one-shotted with Migawari down. With some slight modifications to the strategy, and by making sure to never let Megawari drop, I was able to come up with a solid win on attempt 4, and a strategy that I can recommend for taking this one on. It has many aspects, and all must work together in order for this to be a successful run. Let's go ahead and delve into what's involved now. First, let's talk about Zivioso. His main attacks on the tank will be in two forms, either a single target attack that hit for upwards of 500 damage, or an AoE attack that will completely ignore shadows for everyone in range and hit everyone in range for about 200 damage. Now the spells seen for Zeviosto's casting were all arrow based spells of arrow 5, Eroga 4, both of which hit for about 500 damage, and Silinga, which is very annoying since we don't have Yorinoran who would normally resist this. Therefore, Monboro is pretty much mandatory to make sure that if this goes off, he can successfully Silina everyone in your party. Now the abilities you're going to see used in this run are Mandibular Lashing, and this appears to be a conal move now, not a single player move that wipes shadows, but thankfully it only hits for a few hundred damage in most instances. Now the next move is Incisive Devoutment, which is a critical damage type ability with Enmity Reset. Now at first, I thought this was a Throat Stab type ability, but at one point it did over 4000 damage to RKV and killed him. So this is going to be the largest risk to your tank, as it is not a Throat Stab type ability and can do massive damage. The next ability is Stinger Volley, which is a conal damage and paralyze ability. The next is Vespin Hurricane, which is an AoE damage for up to 500 on RKV. It also inflicts defense down and magic defense down. Note that even though this only does 500 damage to RKV, this ended up doing 1800 damage to me every time it was used. So it's definitely of a danger to us, and one of the reasons why we must make sure we have Megawari up at all times. The next move is Droning Whirlwind. This is an AoE damage ability for up to 1000 damage and dispel. So I have noticed that his proc is normally directly after this ability. I also noticed that this will normally knock you back and wipe your shadows. Now normally what you'd do is you'd recast shadows and then charge back in. The problem is, if you do it in that order, by the time you get back in there, more than likely will have already staggered and summoned a fetter. And therefore, your, your life is going to be a lot more difficult. So what I actually recommend you do is, as soon as you get knocked back, even though your shadows are down, charge right back in there and do a weapon skill. Then put your shadows back up and get back to work. If you do it properly, you will normally never even see a fetter spawn or to only spawn for a brief second. This is one of the most critical parts of this fight. The last thing we'll talk about before moving on from abilities is I wanted to point out that that incisive devoutment is not only the biggest risk to your tank, but also the biggest risk to you. It is the ability that one-shotted me at the end of that third run. It is why you must always make sure that you have Megawari up at all times, so that if the bee happens to face you and immediately use that move, it'll just bounce off your Megawari. The one time it did hit me, it did 3700 damage. So there's no way you're living through this. Just make sure you have Megawari up at all times and we can ignore this mechanic entirely. Now weapon choice and gear selection is also very important in this fight. I actually had to make a gear set just for this run to increase my DPS and accuracy enough to be effective. Now for weapons, I recommend using a Tourette in your main hand and a Turnian plus one in your offhand. Do not even try to use Katanas as they will not do enough damage to allow you to finish the fight in time. None of Ninja's Elemental Ninjutsus did any good damage for me either without Magic Bursting, so I don't suggest you use those either. Just stick to White Damage and Evisceration. Paralyze sticks rather well and can be most helpful, so make sure you keep it on him at all times. Ninja's other Enfeebles sadly did not land. 
In regards to the gear setup specifically, I went with a dual wheeled 20 setup that gave me lots of accuracy, 1350 plus, which seemed to be just the right amount. You may ask why I would go with a dual wheeled 20 setup, and that's because I intend to do this fight without a bard. This is because I need that extra slot for AoE healing in order to make it through this fight. Let's go ahead and talk about Trust now. For Trust, these are the ones I recommend you use. RKV to tank because of the great hit point pool, and because RKV is great at holding hate while we get damage in. Now if she is to die, go ahead and summon August or Amchu to back her up. Now Arcelia is who we're going to use for haste, and she is great with illustrious aid for AoE cures. Now if she were to die, we would summon Koru or King of Hearts to back her up. Now we're going to use Sethtus in the space that we would normally use a Bard, and that is for AoE cures and to restore MP to Kupipi. Now, if Sethtus dies, we will summon Joachim and then Omia to back him up. And we will be using Monboro and Kupipi for cures. Now this is sadly strictly because I don't have Yignis yet. As soon as I have Yignis, Yignis will be taking the place of Kupipi. Now obviously, if Kupipi or Monboro were to die, the next white mage my order would be Cherokee, but let's hope it doesn't come to that. Okay, two last items of note, and then we'll get to our run. The first one is Incisive Apothesis, and it can be used only at low hit points. Now, this is a critical damage attack and curse ability that is conal. Now, this can make the end of the fight very tricky. You have to make the choice between fighting in the stairwell or out in the open. If you fight out in the open and position your trust carefully, you can get all but the tank to avoid this move. Keep in mind, though, that you normally only have one to two minutes of extra time in this run, so you can't spend too long trying to get positioning set up, or you might not finish in time. Now, if you choose to stay in the stairwell, like I do in my battle example, simply keep Migawari and Shadows up at all times, and resummon any replacement trust as they die. I also want to point out that you need to have Inan and Yane up for the entire fight, so that RKV can hold hate. At any point, if you pull hate, you want to make sure that you turn your back and wait for RKV to regain it. Otherwise, you may die to one of those nasty moves after your Megawari is eaten. Last thing I want to point out is that lag is a common situation in Sheol Jail. All you can do is just hit your macros and trust that they're going to go off eventually. However, it can at times mess with gear swaps, so I've also made a TP set macro that I hit if I notice a lag incident has occurred to force me back into my TP gear. This was an issue in my first three runs. This may or may not be necessary for your particular setup, depending on the lag that you experience at your location. Okay, let's go ahead and see what this actual battle example looks like. Enjoy this run, everyone.
And that'll be it for the Zivioso solo video. I hope you found that helpful and informative. I am really looking forward to taking on the next NM in Sheol Jail. The next one I'll be attempting is Arabadi. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Stay safe and stay healthy out there.